we're above 2,500 meters here and uh, following the two men on the bike who are taking us to their very remote village. This is by far the most remote place we've been to. We reached 3,000 meters elevation. We're now uh, heading downhill uh, to the village, which is in the valley below. We've arrived at the village after a very long trip. You can see some of the damage here. We're getting a majestic welcome. It's like during winter, no one moves. Yeah. Everything, the roads are blocked. That's mm. you're, blocked you're blocked here. He's very good with his ball skills. We are so remote and you can just see football, sports, a universal language. So they're telling us that they separate the women in tents. They, I guess they don't have that many tents. So they're they have four, tents. four tents. Okay, so they're splitting men and women in the tents they have here. Tents won't protect us against the snow. We need more useful materials for this region to prepare for the winter because this won't do anything. Seven uh, people lost their lives here and we've just met uh, Ibrahim. Um, Ibrahim lost two sons in the earthquake. So many stories like this where people have lost the most important things in life. <laughs> I'm not the only one who lost my children. My neighbors also did. The majority of the people here had their homes collapse, so now we're outside. This is what God gave us and we have to accept it. So the main message from being here, everybody has told us that they need better infrastructure to deal with the oncoming winter because essentially they go on lockdown. They become completely isolated in this region when the heavy snow falls. And if they don't have adequate protection against the elements, it could be deadly.